garage. So today I'm downtown at the University of Toronto with Neil Wu of the University of Toronto Solar Car team. So Neil, first off here, what is the Solar Car Challenge? So we here are a group of students with the University of Toronto and we essentially build a car, a solar car every two years mm -hmm. to participate in a race in Australia. Okay, and, and you're all undergraduates? Yes, we're all undergraduate students. Are you all engineers? Uh, most of us are. We have one or two students that are from the RSI. Okay, and so obviously this is a solar car, there's lots of aerodynamic design that goes into it. Um, what are the specific challenges for this type of design? So the biggest thing with this type of design is that you have very little power input to play with. Okay. Uh, because it's a solar car, we have to use solar energy and uh, the current solar cells are only about 23, 24% efficient. Okay. So in the end with the solar car, we get maybe 1.2, 1.3 kilowatts to play with okay. for total power consumption. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, this is equivalent to a power of a toaster or a hairdryer and we, you have to drive across a continent with this power. And so you're only allowed solar power, you can't refill your battery exactly. at your stations. Or, okay, yeah. interesting. So we're going to go into a little bit of uh, some specific questions on the aerodynamic design because I understand that you are responsible for the, the aerodynamic design of the next car. And this is the 2013 car? Yes. Okay. So to begin with here, uh, what types of tools do you use to design the car? So mostly uh, design is broken into two sections. You, you, you design and construct the vehicle in CAD okay. uh, with the computer program. We use CATIA. Okay. And after you do that, you will have to validate your design. And because of our limited budget, we, will, we use CFD for, for all of our design validation. And what type of CFD software do you use? So we typically use uh, ANSYS CFX as, long as, okay. uh, uh, as, as well as uh, Fluent. So you use both of those in conjunction. Okay. Um, and I know that you did some research with me a couple summers ago, and we'll show some results of that later. Um, but let's continue on. For this particular design, are we designing for uh, no flow separation? Are we designing for a laminar boundary layer? Like what? What sort of the, the, the challenges here? So, so first of all, because you want to go with the vehicle with minimal drag, mm -hmm. uh, you will want to reduce flow separation at all possible. Okay. So basically, you're going for for a very streamlined geometry that has very little pressure drag. Okay. And on top of that, you would want to have a geometry that would promote laminar boundary layer for as far as possible. Okay, so that's going to be reducing your skin friction drag. You want the lowest drag possible, so you have the highest efficiency. Does that increase your top speed? Yes, it certainly does. And uh, the laminar versus turbine boundary layer actually mm -hmm. plays a huge role in our design. Uh, which is why a lot of our efforts in CFD are focused on predicting as well as trying to extend this uh, laminar okay. boundary layer. Now I know that we talked about drag a little bit. What about lift? This Some people might think that this is just a big wing on wheels. So is lift a, a key issue? How do you design for that? Uh, so the, the thing with the uh, in terms of lift is that we want a car that is stable. Uh, so what we do is we actually design for neutral lift. So under okay. typical cruising conditions, you have the there is no aerodynamic forces in the vertical direction. Does that counteract the gravity of the car, like the weight of the car? No, or? no. It, it purely it, it means that the the car exerts no aerodynamic forces. Okay. Uh, now with, with a ground vehicle, the difference between ground vehicles and airplanes is that uh, because it's near the ground, mm -hmm. if you have an airflow near the ground, it actually produces a downforce. Mm -hmm. uh, so in order to counter that, you produces lift in the sense that if you test this vehicle w without putting it near the ground, they will produce some amount of lift. So it's just like a wing? Yes. But because it's near the ground, that sort of cancels out exactly. and we get a neutral uh, yes. condition. Yes. Interesting. Okay. So as I mentioned, we did some experiments, you and I, a couple summers ago, and one of the key things that we found was on the driver canopy here, we had some flow separation near the back just because of, the, of this particular shape. Um, are we, or are you going to be changing this design to try and combat that finding. Exactly. So uh, one of the major focus of the design was, as I said earlier, to mm -hmm. eliminate any flow separation. Okay. So because we knew from this design that there was flow separation from the back, what I did was essentially extend the canopy for a little bit longer and okay. uh, design the 
curvature such that uh, there will be no flow separation. Okay, so basically you took this canopy and stretched it out in the streamwise direction a little bit more to try and prevent that flow yep. separation. Interesting, okay. What is the most challenging area of this car? So this car has canopy, it has fairings for the wheels. What's the most challenging area to design for aerodynamics? Uh, so the most challenging part is probably the junction between the wheel fairings okay. and the main rear body. Okay. Uh, and it's because uh, in junction flow, there's a lot of vortices that gets produced. Mm -hmm. Unless you, you design the shape properly, uh, that's going to trip your boundary layer. So like a fairing or something? or a... Yes. So, so you need to blend all your surfaces okay. such that their curvature continues uh, so you do not get these vortices. When we went to the wind tunnel for testing, we noticed there was some separation over here as well. In addition to the, to the canopy, we, we had flow separation essentially with air coming in from here and separating around this point and reattaching some of it. Because these, these fairings are actually two separate fairings? Yes. Not one continuous fairing? Yeah. So you had flow separation the the rear of the front yeah. fairing. So so this entire region here was was, was a big circulating area. On both sides. On both sides. Well, wow, it's a large drag source. Drag and lift is one thing. Um, what about stability? Because I know you're you're in Australia. Is that correct? Yeah. You have some crosswinds. You have some turbulence in the atmosphere. What about stability for this kind of car? So yeah, stability is certainly a, a major issue. Mm -hmm. uh, from the last race, we've seen. Uh, significant crosswind uh, on, okay. on some days, okay. uh, and there are cars which which were in oversteer condition that were basically okay. zigzagging as they were driving because uh, they were they constantly having to correct yes. themselves. Oh. So there was a lot of okay. uh, pressure on the driver to to react properly, yeah. and that also produces a lot of uh, extra rolling resistance mm -hmm. on the tires. Okay, so certainly. Uh, one way to combat this mm -hmm. would be to ensure that you know the center of pressure and the center of gravity are in the correct position, so yeah. uh, your vehicle is stable. Okay. And the other way to combat this is either make the car a little bit heavier mm -hmm. or produce some downforce okay. so that you have more traction. But then if you produce more downforce, you have more rolling resistance. Exactly. So there's kind of a trade-off there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so you're talking about the center of pressure from the side of the car, right? Or from the uh, top? So you would... You would uh, center pressure is a dynamic. Uh, it depends on the mm -hmm. flow condition. Okay. So you would test, you would uh, compute the center pressure under different crosswind cases. Okay. And then determine if you have a stable or unstable case. So basically, a stable case, the car would correct itself. Yes. Unstable, you would have okay. to correct with a yes, driver. Exactly. Okay. What percentage of your power loss? is due to drag, and what percentage is due to rolling resistance? Let's say cruising conditions. Right. So rolling resistance accounts for 20 to 30%. This is at cruising conditions? At cruising conditions. Okay, which is at what speed? Uh, so I typically run all my CFD simulations at 75 kilometers. 75, okay. So 20 to 30, so that means the aerodynamic drag is, is uh, 70 to 80? Yeah. So that's why this is such a huge component of the exactly. design of the solar car, is yeah. because it takes most of the energy um, and the higher the drag, that means the more efficient your solar cells or the more solar cells you need, like things like yeah. that. Okay. And also remember that uh, power consumption of aerodynamic drag is cubic to velocity. Mm -hmm. So uh, as okay. velocity increases, uh, the power goes up uh, significantly. So if you were able to reduce the drag and increase your top speed or increase your cruising speed, would that be something you want to do? Or would you want to keep the same cruising speed and have less solar cells? Like what, what's the so, trade off so there? Dur during the, uh, are, are you talking more about design or during the race? Dur during the de design and, and races. Okay, so so during design, we, we essentially will try and optimize for, you know, uh, essentially lowest aerodynamic drag. At uh, 70 or? At 75 kilometers an hour. Got it, okay. And uh, in terms of solar cells, uh, the race dictates that you, you can only have maximum of six square meters of silicon solar panels. Okay, so the requirements limit your... Yes. Your, okay. Yeah, so so there's essentially, uh, that's, that's like a fixed number mm -hmm. in, in terms of power input. Okay. So you're trying to reduce your power output uh, consumption such that you can drive faster. And basically, if you can drive faster, that means you have an advantage over the other comp okay, yeah. contestants. Do you know what the top speed of this car is? I mean, I know your cruising speed is 70 kilometers an hour, but what's your top speed based on drag sort of considerations? Uh, so that, that depends on what you mean by top speed. What's the theoretical top speed this car could achieve? 
like drag is equal to your maximum power output. Okay, uh, probably in the range of 150 kilometers. Per hour. We, we, but you we never go up that high. No, we, we we have a pretty powerful motor okay. that produces seven kilowatts maximum. Okay. Uh, but no, we we I think the top speed that we went at during the race was about 102 kilometers. Per hour. Okay, that was your top speed. Excellent. How do the rules and regulations of this design challenge? How does it affect how you design your your uh, solar car? Uh, so. In essence, aerodynamic design is sort of a packaging model. Mm -hmm. You have you have a driver, you have these wheels, and you have you know chassis and suspension. And the 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 question is, what is the optimal geometry that would encompass all of these things? Are there other requirements though that still yes, limit that? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So so before twenty thirteen, yeah, uh, the race allowed for three wheeled vehicles. Okay. So because three-wheeled vehicles, you essentially have a quarter less rolling resistance. Mm -hmm. And what people tended to do was uh, put two front wheels and one rear wheel. Okay. And they would fit the driver, essentially package that with the rear wheel. So the, the driver fairing and the rear and the well, wheel? It was a single fairing. Okay. Uh, and that was a lot more aerodynamic than these designs. Okay. So once they introduced the four-wheel uh, constraint, mm -hmm. there was actually different teams went about with different approaches. This okay. was one of the approaches. but. Uh, and this approach was a symmetrical approach. You had the driver in the middle, yep. and you had four wheels. So you basically had five fairings. Exactly. Yes. But what was the other design? So there were designs with essentially four fairings. You would fit the driver within your main body, but your main body would be a lot thicker. So you'd have to move the driver to one side then? No, no. So you can have the driver in the middle, but... Have just one big bl fairing? Blend the fairing with the main body. So a much larger fairing? Yes. Okay. And, and the other option, like you said, is you have four wheels and you move the driver to in between one of the front and rear wheels. That makes an asymmetrical design though, which is a little bit more tricky in Much terms of sta trickier. stability, yes. things like that, because the car is not symmetrical about the center line, exactly. right? Okay. Um, interesting. So yeah, th those are the kind of regulation changes that they, I guess they make to try and promote new designs. Is that so, kind of what so the reason is? Part of the reason is that because designs have been stagnating for some years. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is they're trying to push for solar cars that are a lot more practical. Okay. So they enforced four wheel drive, uh, four wheels, and they enforced uh, essentially a more stringent vision requirement and safety requirement. Okay. Uh, which of course will, will have drag penalties, but they're trying yeah. to make cars that are much more practical. So I guess the three-wheel design wasn't really that practical in terms of an actual car you would use, yeah. um, but a four-wheel is more close, yeah. closely and, resembling and a real have, car, right? Yeah, they have proper vision requirement. They have requirement for you know uh, the, the the driver's space that mm -hmm. you cannot have a canopy that 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 comes to here. So he doesn't hit you in the head exactly. if you crash or something exactly. like that. Okay. So which is also why the canopy is shaped the way it is right now. This this so this is just to give the driver more. Yeah, so there's a requirement that the driver must be able to swing forward four to five degrees oh, without okay. hitting any component of the car. Which would simulate a crash and then get yes. pushed forward. Okay, yes. interesting. Typically, there's two approaches to reducing your drag. One is to make a more efficient shape, which is reducing your coefficient of drag. Mm -hmm. And the other one is to either reduce your cross-sectional area or I guess your wetted surface area here. Can you comment on what kind of approach you're taking for the next design? So this is a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, of course, would, the, the two sort of work together. Um, but the problem with reducing your wetted area is that you you must provide enough surface area so that you can fit six square meters of solar panels. Yeah, because this this whole top here is basically yeah, just, just solid. Completely covered. Except for the driver canopy. Yeah. Got it, okay. So, so because of that constraint, uh, you, you, you have to work with what is given. Yes. But okay. on the same hand, uh, uh, at, the, at the same time, the competition also allows the use of uh, what's called um, uh, galley marcenite solar panels, okay. w which operate at, uh, at 30 plus percent efficient efficiency. Okay. But they only allow you to have three square meters of those panels. Versus what are these ones? Six, uh, those are 22 percent efficient. Okay. So what, what some teams have done is hmm. make a car half the size. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, because you only allow half the solar panels, you lose some in the uh, power input. Yeah. But you can easily make that up by like having a, more, a much smaller car. Like a more efficient, a less drag exactly. car. Yeah, so, okay. so they will have like cars that are essentially half the size of this car. Uh, that's so even though they have less power, 
they have less repair requirement. Exactly. So they actually mm -hmm. drive much faster. Mm. Uh, the problem with that is those solar panels are space gray solar panels that cost a lot of money. Okay, uh, so that really so depends on what exactly. kind of funding you have. Given or... our budget, we, we, we basically go with silicon. I mean, that's, that's the real world, right? One of the main areas that was identified for improvement was the driver canopy design. Let's now look at some experiments that were performed in the water channel at the University of Toronto. The technique we are using is called hydrogen bubble visualization. In this technique, bubbles are produced upstream to the left and move downstream to the right. The movement of the bubbles clearly show the flow structures happening along the center line of the solar car. The most obvious flow structure is the separation occurring at the back of the driver canopy. This separation forms a large separated wake, which is turbulent and mixing. This is a high source of drag. While this is a qualitative investigation technique, Quantitative investigations were also performed using a technique known as PIV. If we compare those results to the hydrogen bubble results, we see that, again, the separation bubble is identified. If we zoom into the driver canopy region, we can see this more clearly. The separation is occurring at the back of the driver canopy, and this is forming recirculating flow. We can see the separated area along the side of the driver canopy as well. This shows that the separation is a large three-dimensional shape. Another feature is a small separation and roll-up at the front of the driver canopy. This is likely due to junction flow. One of the main tools used by the solar car team is CFD. Let's see how this compares to the experiments. We are now looking at the solar car from a bird's eye view. And we have a wire on the surface of the solar car producing hydrogen bubbles. We can see the movement of the bubbles and the shape that they make. If we now compare the experimental findings to that from the CFD results, we can see that similar behaviors are found. The shape of the streamlines in the experiment and the CFD result are very similar and in both cases the large separated wake behind the driver canopy is identified. This gives us high confidence in the CFD results. Let's take one last look at the experimental results, although now we have a pulsed hydrogen bubble sheet. This clearly shows the movement of the bubbles along the surface of the car, and we see that large separated wake behind the driver canopy. Again, these behavior of the streamlines is very similar to the CFD results. So what we've seen so far is that the design of the driver canopy is very important. But how does this design affect other systems on the solar car? I talked to Neil about the fillet edge radius of the driver canopy for more information. So the canopy... Uh, we already talked about the back with the yeah. separation, but what about, you were saying something about the fillet radius here? So yeah, so in order to blend the canopy with, with the rest of the air body properly, mm -hmm. you, you have to apply these fillets on the sides all the way around. Um, they're, they're, they're not only for, for head-on flow, but also in cross-wind cases, you don't want uh, essentially a very sharp junction. Okay. Um, but but there, there comes a trade-off where if you make this too large, then, then you essentially decrease the total area for solar panels that, that you have available. Because I can see uh, your solar panels only go up to a certain... Yeah, so, so, so there, there's a line here, which is the end of the fillet, and the solar panels basically cannot go past that line. So if you made the fillet larger, you would you'd sort of push this out? Yeah, and then you'd, you'd lose some cells here around the canopy. Okay. This has been a look at the aerodynamic design of one of the coolest cars on the road, the solar car, and the work that these undergraduate teams do to advance this technology for the future. What we have seen is that the design is not easy. It takes both experimental investigations, CFD simulations, and a lot of hard work to come up with a design that both satisfies the requirements of the challenge as well as beats other competitors in the challenge. What we have also seen is that the design is iterative. There are always some areas that need improvement. And this is true for all automotive aerodynamics. I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have, and I'd like to take this moment to thank the University of Toronto Solar Car team, and in particular Neil, for giving me access and answering my questions. Garage.